a statement of the child's present levels of academic achievement and functional performance, including how the child's disability affects the child's involvement and progress in the general education curriculum, for preschool children as appropriate, how the disability affects the child's participation in appropriate activities, and for children with disabilities who take alternate assessments aligned to alternate achievement standards, a description of benchmarks or short-term objectives. Present levels of performance is how we often refer to this section, and the reason that it's a requirement is that you want to have an idea at that point in time of what the child's current performance is. I mean, that's a really simple way of putting it, but keep in mind that the IEP is an educational record, and the IEP team has to meet at least once a year, as we know, and so you want to be looking as you're looking over a course of a child's education as to how they were at that moment in time because it drives the rest of the IEP. Right. You know, the way that I like to look at it is you wouldn't be basing your child's individualized education program if he's seven years old on what he, what he might be performing at when he's four. So we have to capture the present levels of performance because that should be in direct alignment with the um, goals that the child has in. The IEP. That's right. And it's really important, and this gets left out a lot in the conversation, but it's important that what the IDEA says is present levels of academic performance and functional, mm. academic achievement and functional performance. So it's not just focusing on the academics. We're also wondering how is this child functioning? And that's a piece of this that often gets left out of the conversation in my experience. Well, if you've ever been at a IEP team meeting for your child and um, something in the conversation is mentioned about how academically well the child is mm -hmm. doing. Mm -hmm. um, and everybody seems to focus on just the academics. That's why it's so important that this part that's required by federal law not only says present levels of academic achievement, but the functional performance. Mm -hmm. How is the child doing socially, emotionally, behaviorally? Right. Um, as far as um, what are some of the other some domains? Daily living skills is an example. Right. So it's not just about academics. No, it's, it's, you and I say that all the time. It's important to remember, even when it gets to current levels of performance, we're supposed to be focusing on the functional aspect as well. And then, you know, where do you get the information? How do you know how the child's pr doing at that moment? And it, it can come from any number of sources, report cards, standardized assessments, district-wide testing, anecdotal reports of the team and the parents. Observations. Observations. Uh, standardized tests of any kind, but whether recent or the most recent that you have. Recent evaluations mm -hmm. by um, either the school staff or independent evaluators. Sure. Progress reports. Th there's no limit mm -hmm. as to where the information comes from, as long as it's um, a legitimate source that the, the team agrees to recognize. So present levels of performance, that's the first requirement.